A big issue I see in a lot of beginner work in 3D animation is face appeal. So today what I'm going to go over is a number of really quick implementable tips which will take your face from the default rig which feels a bit stiff and ugly to quite a nice graphic shapes and things that you can think about and implement into your work in your posing and throughout the whole process really. So enjoy. So we're here in Maya with the Apollo rig and for this video in particular we're just going to focus on the eye mask. So I consider the eye mask the area with the brows and the eyes, and maybe a little bit of the cheeks as well. The first tip I have for you is that the apex of the top eyelid should be over the pupil. So right now the top point, the highest point, the apex, is about here on the eye and about here on this eye. So it's not too bad, but for me, I think that it should be over the pupil more. So I'm gonna bring it over in both of these cases. So what I'm gonna do is just grab the top eyelid, move it over a bit, and maybe one of these ones, just bring it up a little bit just so that shape flows in and the apex is over the eye a little bit more. And let's do the same on the other side. I'm gonna bring it over a bit so the highest point starts to get over the pupil. And maybe I'll raise this so it's a softer edge going around. This idea becomes even more prevalent when you move the eye line way over. So this is the default eyelid positions with the eyes way over. Um, so you can see the difference when I move the apex of those eyelids over versus the default rig. And that's just gonna make it all feel nice and connected and a lot more appealing. So you have to remember that the eye underneath this is a big circle that's moving around and it's pulling all of the rest of this with it. So when this rotates this way, it's pulling all of the skin around it and pulling it over. So that's why you end up with this kind of lump. From a side view, we also have the pupil sticks out a little bit. So when you take that into consideration, hopefully it makes a bit more sense why it pulls that skin around. When you get to quite extreme poses like this and you've moved the looking controller all the way over, you often get issues where the eyes are getting quite asymmetrical now. This eye has some white to the side of it, whereas this eye is completely buried. So don't be afraid to just grab the individual eye controllers in the look controller and adjust them a bit. So I'm gonna move this one over and move this one back. So when comparing the two of those poses, we have a way clearer eye direction when we move the individual eyes. So pay attention to the whites of the eyes and try and balance it out between both of them and it'll be a lot nicer. Another thing you can do to help sell the eye direction is to adjust the face and eye mask around it to really support that. Right now we're looking to the right. If we open up this side of the face and compress this side of the face, some people refer, like to draw this and illustrate it as more of like a shark mouth. So this side's compressed and this side's open. So what that's gonna do is support the eye direction. So if I bring up this side, maybe make the flow of the brows nice. And if we use like the squash and stretch controllers a little bit and open up this way, compress this side, lengthen this side as I was talking about. Uh, we can even open up the eyes a bit more on this side. Uh, I can scale this side a bit. So already with those quick changes, we've used the whole face to support the eye direction. So we've done that on kind of a macro level on the face and the brows, but we can also do it within the eye mask itself and with the eye shape itself. So each of these eyes can have a more compressed side and the more open side because we're biasing here. And we can open up the eyes on both sides. So let's have a go at that. That's quite a subtle change, but I think it makes a difference and I think it makes the eye direction even clearer and more appealing. When looking at the whites of the eyes here, we have white above and below the eyes. So the whole pupil is surrounded by white right now. This is okay sometimes. If you're shocked, that's fine. And if it's a super graphic cartoony character, it's fine to have this for you know most expressions. But for a more structured character like Apollo here, who's a bit more anatomically correct, you really wanna to touch at least a tiny bit of the eyelid to his eyes uh, you can do that with the bottom as well so if his eye line was really low then that's fine as long as it's touching a little bit then this is going to look okay another thing to consider is how much of the pupil you're seeing so a common issue i see is something like this where the pupils are quite buried i think it gives a decent expression but a general rule of thumb is that you want to see at least half of that black of the pupil for the expression to read so this is way clearer and the intention is way clearer of being you know annoyed versus this, which feels quite sleepy. If you're going for sleepy, then that's perfectly fine. But if that's not the intention you're aiming for, make sure to not bury those pupils. Moving on to the brows now, a big thing with default rigs is that they have kind of two points like this. You have this angle and this angle. But to get a more anatomical and correct feeling brow, 
having a little bit of a three point situation is just going to feel a lot nicer. So I'm just going to pull down these kind of furrow controls. Um, we're already starting to get that three point going on and maybe this one. So as a default brow, we have this kind of soft shape or this shape where it's a bit more structured with those three lines. And I think that's a lot clearer. Here we have quite a shocked expression and we still have that kind of underlying structure of the one, two, three angle is in here. Sometimes with more graphic pushed expressions, I think it's okay to have it as, you know, one shape. But this, this is kind of more cartoony. It depends how structured you want to be. Another thing to look out for is the flow of the eyebrows. So we have a cool expression here, but it doesn't feel connected because this line does not flow into this. So that's an easy fix. All you need to do is adjust the middle of these brows so that there's a nice flow between them and an imaginary line could be drawn between them. So now we have a nice flow between those two. And if you compare that to the frame before, it just feels a lot more connected and nice. A general rule of thumb when moving brows is that the lower they are, the more they need to be pushed inwards. So here I've lowered them and for that to make sense, I need to furrow the brows a bit more and bring them in. And the opposite is also true. So if I was to raise the brows, I would need to bring them out. You also need to make sure to connect the top lids to those brows. So when they're lower, you lower the top lids and when the eyebrows are higher, you connect the top lids with that as well. This tip's a bit more polishy, but when going from pose to pose with brows, I always want to keep in mind animation principles of lead and follow. A common rule of thumb that I follow is inner brows lead on the way down on downwards movements and the middle brow leads on upwards movements for brows. Of course, you can mix and match this and get different feels depending on what you want to lead with. And it's a very subtle amount, but just that little bit of breakup adds a nice amount of polish to your work. But what about asymmetry during these moves? You can get asymmetry by leading with one brow slightly more than the other brow. A really cheap and quick way of doing this is using Animbot's time offsetter slider and I'll offset one brow half a frame later than the other brow so there's a slight difference. After doing that though I need to double check that the connection between the middle brows still works. So following the earlier principle where there has to be an imaginary line between those two I go through and make sure that they are connected. You can take this idea even further and apply it to the entire eye mask. So here I'm leading very subtly with the right side more than the left side. The right eye and brow are leading before the left eye and brow. And you don't necessarily need to use tools like Animbot to achieve this. You can just go in frame by frame and slightly lead one side more than the other. So that's just 10 tips and hopefully they're useful for you. There's hundreds of little things you're thinking about whilst animating and the more you learn, the more you do subconsciously. So it's hard to pull out specific things, but hopefully these ones are ones that students can think about to improve their shot and to troubleshoot their shots when it comes to the IMR specifically. Uh, this is different to the normal type of video I do. I, I mean, I don't really make videos. I've done live streams before, but I wanted to try something a bit more structured. If you like this kind of thing, let me know. Maybe I'll do one on like the mouth neck since I only covered the top of the face and then I can go on and do other videos and different things. Let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. See you later.